in the farthest corners of Mauritania. Imprisoned under the catacombs of sleep. There lies a creature of pure horror. An abomination so vile, it can only be described by its name, The Nightmare. Oh hey, hi. I hope you like that intro. I spent a stupid amount of time on it. Speaking of stupid amounts of time, sorry it's been like half a year, Jesus, time flies. Uh, last episode I got a fire cape, and since then I got a car, the car blew up, I moved into a new place with my girlfriend, we've been renovating that place because it was kinda depressing, I got a new car, that one hasn't blown up yet so that's good, really I've just been grinding my real life skills. Anyway, apparently I have a thousand subscribers now too, which is pretty cool, so thanks for that. Episode 1 also has 1.4k views as of writing this, so also thank you. Seriously, very cool, my dudes. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. The goal of this series is to take on some of RuneScape's hardest challenges with an account that's built like an off-brand gummy bear. And it's not an Iron Man because my self-hatred hasn't rooted that deep yet. Uh, last episode, we took on Jad, and we honestly kind of bodied him. This episode, I want to try something a little more challenging. Now, a lot of people say Nightmare is kind of dead content, and you shouldn't be doing it for money in 2022. Uh, the Corrupt Gauntlet is pretty much where you should be if you're after GP, and that may be true, but be that as it may, Fasani's solo nightmare is still one of the hardest challenges in the game. And sure, once you get used to her mechanics, it's easy enough, but you could say that about any boss. In Cox, you can literally die as many times as you need until you kill Olm. In Tobe, as long as one person survives each room in your party, you will make it to the end. But in Fasani's nightmare, it's you and her, and her attacks are constant and unforgiving. Like, even in my best gear, one mistake and the run is over. Even if, by some miracle, I tank the hit, the cost of supplies is so detrimental that I can't sustain the rest of the half-hour fight, and I need to teleport out and reset. Before I can attempt the nightmare, I need some better gear, and better stats. One of the most crucial things I'm missing from my best-in-slot gear set is an imbued Slayer Helm. An imbued Berserker Ring wouldn't hurt either, but the defensive bonuses from the Helm will make me so much tankier, and honestly, I don't even want to attempt either nightmare challenge without it. As cute as the bear head is, the Slayer Helm is definitely the way to go. Plus I need to train some combat stats up anyways, so a Slayer is definitely going to be my life for the next few days. Now if you didn't know, you can use Turiel, Turiel, I don't know how to say his name, to speed up Slayer Point Collection. You'll get less Slayer XP, but it's a good trade off. You just use the highest tier Slayer Master you can whenever there's like a multiplier, and use Turiel and Birth up for every other task and just cannon them, get it done quick. And there we go, 140 tasks, 400 points, we can now buy ourselves. Uh, the unlock to craft a Slayer Helmet. We just gotta get 55 crafting so that we can actually do that. And there we go, 55 crafting, so we can go ahead and sell uh, the rest of all these. Get some money back, and then uh, let's go ahead and get our Slayer Helm, finally. Oh, okay, turns out there's just a quest you gotta do to unlock the reinforced goggles. Uh, so, we just went ahead and banged that out real quick. Portion of interest, all done. Some free Flare XP as well. Uh, so, let's go make that helmet. Alright, there it is. 400 points. We have now unlocked the ability to make a Slayer Helm. And of course, I'm doing it in front of Neve because I have a crush on her and I want her to be impressed with like my crafting abilities. Check this out, Neve. No big deal. Is she watching? Is she looking? Did she notice? Do you think she noticed? I think she noticed. Uh, next up, Monkey Madness. It seems unrelated, but basically I need to train my stats up a lot, like probably base 75s for Ashihama and base 90s for Fasani, and that grind will be a lot easier with a Dragon Scimitar. The downside is as a pure, once I finish Monkey Madness, I will not be able to return to Ape Atoll. I spent a lot of time looking into workarounds for this to see if I could, because theoretically being able to go back and finish the Monkey King section of Recipe for Disaster would unlock Rune Gloves. Uh, but alas, there is no workaround, I think they've intentionally blocked it because it would be overpowered. 
uh, other than maybe pafting your way in, and I'm not trying to get banned, so rune gloves are a no-go for now. The other downside is I lose access to the bursting caves, so before I locked myself out I bought 31 mil worth of chinchampas and spent an unhealthy amount of time in these caves. That way I will never feel like there was unheld potential in those caves. I have thrown enough chinchampas to satiate my thirst for a lifetime. Thank you very much. I also finished Fairy Tale Part 1 for the Secateurs and Fairy Rings. There are a few things I'll need a higher farming level for, so the Secateurs would be nice and Fairy Rings are just amazing. Uh, I also finished Dig Site and Bone Voyage for access to Fossil Crabs, or Ammonite Crabs, because I have a lot of combat stats to train. Uh, it honestly feels like these days Ammonite Crabs are more crowded than Rock Crabs though. Y you leave your spot for 30 seconds to reset aggro and someone's going your spot, it's absolutely ruthless. Yo, shout out this guy, Detroit Taz. Hitting me up with the impressive account, making me feel like the grind is worth it. <laughs> Alright, doing my first farm run of these willow trees here. Uh, and the XP is so much better than the oak trees, it's crazy. Bam, 32 farming. I think the highest requirement I need right off the bat is 48 farming, so I'm probably going to stop at 48. Uh, and then, actually I'll probably just keep slowly chipping away at it. We do eventually need 70 for uh, Song of the Elves and attempting the gauntlet and all that, so... So the XP rates from Nightmare Zone were just god awful. I was getting like less than 40k XP an hour. Um, so I'm just gonna wait until I'm 70 strength and 70 attack before I try and go back to the Nightmare Zone. Um, but those might even be good enough stats to attempt uh, at least some Fuss or some Ashihama. Hey, little visit from Will Smith. Can't complain about that. Thank you, Will. Hey, no problem. You know, I was in the neighborhood. Oh my god. There it is. Ah, oh, it happened. It finally happened. Oh my god, we can rest. Crazy, dude. <clears throat> 889 total. 70 strength, 60 attack. So, just one more stat. I guess two. But this is going to come when I get 70 attacks. So, I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, just one more stat that I actually uh, really need to attempt a nightmare. So... That is gonna be beautiful. All right, just hit 70 attack, and I also hit 75 hit points not too long ago, so I can officially wear a torture. Uh, I could go grab one to make this nightmare training a little bit faster, and I'm probably gonna sub out the kilt and uh, manacles for white armor just to make myself a bit more tanky, because uh, I'm finding that the absorption is not lasting that long, and it's really hard to, I'm not really like gaining many points for the amount I have to spend on overloads and absorptions, so I think I'm either going to like just do prayer potions the entire way essentially, or yeah, I'm gonna try like a different setup and see how that works. Um, but yeah, it's getting late, so I'm probably gonna call it for the night soon. But this is pretty good progress for like a week here. I think we should be able to attempt the nightmare tomorrow, hopefully. So yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so I'm doing a bit of an unorthodox farm run here. I'm just checking the health and then teleporting to the next place, and then I'll come back and do it again um, and actually uh, replant them because this run should get me to 30 farming. I think actually one more tree. Uh, and then once I'm 30 farming, I can come, come back and plant willow trees and I'll get um, significantly more XP. Uh, so that is pretty much the plan. Okay, so I'm back here in the prayer setup. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the prayer setup for now. Um, the issue with the overloads and the absorptions is that, uh, because of my defense, the absorptions just don't last that long. Like, a whole inventory of absorptions maybe last me two overload potions if, I, if I'm if i paying attention, because I just drain so fast. And so for how many points I have to spend to keep up with it, I just really wasn't making any. Like, I would make 100k points, spend 90, make 100k points, spend 90, so I was only making like 10k points at a time. So I think I'm just going to stick to the prayer uh, method. It's going to be a lot more expensive, uh, but I'll be able to keep my points so I can actually imbue my stuff because, um, yeah, it's just been a day of like not getting points here and I'm kind of getting bored of it. So I'm just going to go back to this. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, 650,000 nightmare points so I can finally imbue my Berserker ring. Oh, that feels good. So I actually just found another 13 defense account here. He's got a really nice account. I've like I think this is the first 13 defense account I've actually seen in game other than the one that I'm making obviously um, and it's really cool it's really cool he's got the halo he's got the black armor dude he's looking so kidded okay there we go imbued slayer helmet 
awesome. Pretty much the only thing this really does for us is it, instead of having a negative magic bonus for defense, it has a positive one, as well as it has a plus three attack magic bonus. And now when we use it for slayer tasks, we can use main or range. So that's pretty nice. I only have a little bit more XP to 74 attack and then uh, one more level to 75 after that. So I'm just going to keep grinding out some nightmare zone points here, get myself to 75 attack, and then I think we're going to do um, our first Fosani kill. Once I hit 75 in attack and strength and I got my helm and ring imbued, it was time to head back to Mass Nightmare. Uh, the reason I'm saying back is because very early on in the account when I had like base 30s, I actually made a Mass Nightmare run and survived, uh, but I didn't do enough damage for it to count as a kill. That's why I figured 75 would be a good base point for me to come back at. So I think this is going to be my setup for uh, Nightmare Mass. Eventually I'll get 75 mage so I can upgrade to an occult and a trident and a mage 2 cape. Uh, but right now I'm just going to bring a Staff of Air, um, and I'm going to put the Wind Blast on that, bam, that should do. And then I've got some Rune Darts so that um, I can take out the Sleepwalkers. So that should be all I really need for some mass. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really too worried about mass, it's going to be super easy. Um, I'm more worried about Fasani's Nightmare, that's going to be a lot harder, I'm going to need better stats for that. But you need to do at least one kill of Ashihama to attempt Fosani. Um, and I at least want to get 50 just so I can get ranked on the leaderboards, you know, why not? For those of you who don't know as well, um, there's a, a plugin called the Bank Tabs plugin, and it lets you create like really easy bank tag layouts, so I can just go 13 defense, um, nightmare, and you could change the, the, the icon, so I might just do like Inquisitor's Helm, and if I just press this button, it just lays it all out exactly like the inventory is and my setup is, so anytime I want to do it in the future I can just like click it and go. And, Makes it super easy. Anyway, so something hilarious happened while I was doing this. Um, I got invited by a CC of like only peers. It's just these like th these three guys who are all peers, and they're also doing nightmare. And they invited me, and they've got some good setups. Whoa! Yeah, for that. First KC. Did we do enough damage? Yo, <laughs> we got a draw. Uh. Uh, Mass Nightmare was a breeze, and it honestly may have been a mistake because it overfilled me with confidence about taking on Fasani. The plan was to attempt Fasani with at least base 90s originally, but after banging out a few Ashihama kills, I decided I was ready to attempt Fasani. Oh, how naive past me was. Like, I'm going to pause for a second before I show you the Fasani footage, and I'm going to take the next few minutes to explain Fasani's mechanics and why, like, what I was trying to do was impossible. If you already know this stuff, just skip ahead, but I think it's worth going over the mechanics just so we know what kind of challenge I was dealing with. Uh, firstly, Fasani's standard attacks, uh, magic, range, and melee, they deal huge damage and they need to be prayed against. It's possible to flick all of these, but I prefer to just leave my prayers on melee when I'm not swapping, this way I don't get caught off guard by a melee hit or husk spawning. Um, she has 9 special attacks that are pretty much identical to the regular Nightmare special attacks, however she can use them at any time during any phase. There are a few special attacks that don't really matter too much, and there are a few that are unavoidable and will make or break the fight. Fasani can spawn husks or impregnate the player with a parasite, both of which cause unavoidable damage. For the husks you need a fast hitting crush weapon, most players bring a ham joint, but my max hit with a ham joint wasn't high enough, so in past runs I was using the special attack from an Elder Maul. Uh, in future runs with 90 strength though, I will be able to use a ham joint and save my special attacks for Fasani. Parasites can be dealt with by drinking a dose of Sanfu Serum or Resilium's Bomb uh, to reduce the damage taken, but either way you still take damage from both. In between each phase, Fasani also spawns uh, Sleepwalkers, starting with one increasing each wave until wave 4. Uh, in the last phase, Sleepwalkers also spawn constantly, and the best method people have found is just to tank the Sleepwalker hits and hope you kill Fasani faster than the Sleepwalkers kill you. I didn't seem to have too many issues with this in um, my runs on my main account, so I think as long as I'm full health and fully potted up going into the final phase, I should be okay. Um, that means really the wave where four Sleepwalkers spawn is the most tricky. If all four don't die, I take massive damage going into the final phase where I will be taking constant unavoidable damage. So the issue is I have to kill these Sleepwalkers fast enough and I need to bring an extra weapon to do that, like a blowpipe, because it is literally a tick perfect cycle, like they all need to be killed pretty much within a few ticks of each other. 
Grasping Claws is normally a joke in Ashihama's Nightmare, but in Fasani's, it's absolutely brutal. Basically, if you are on a black circle when the attack registers, you take massive damage. Usually it's an instant death, but not always. Unlike in Ashihama though, she doesn't just spawn it once, she can use it 5 times in a row in the first 4 phases, and it spawns constantly in the 5th phase. Uh, the best way around this is to time your attacks and movement around one of Fasani's corner tiles. As long as you aren't standing on that tile when the game calculates where the next tiles will be, a shadow should never spawn there. I say should because as I've experienced firsthand, if you stay on a tile just a tick too long, it will spawn under you regardless of if it's a corner or not. The rest of her attacks aren't too bad, she can shuffle your prayers, spawn these spores that slow you down, uh, she can charge at you like a bull from across the room, and she also does this thing with flowers that's pretty uncool. But all of those ones are pretty easy to avoid. Okay, so that's the mechanics, back to the Fasani footage. Uh, my first attempt lasted 6 minutes, and it looked a little something like this. Ah! <laughs> The account just wasn't ready yet, but I'm stubborn so I ended up making quite a few more attempts, most where I ended up having to teleport out because I used too many resources early on, or got unlucky with Parasite RNG and route out of Sandfuse or Resiliums. Because of the length of the fight, I really need to save my resources for those unavoidable damage hits, and if I use them for any other avoidable damage, it's pretty much a write-off fight. Other than that, it's pretty much a matter of trying to prayer flick whenever possible to save on prayers and restores. I am using a Blood Fury as well, so there are times where I can rely on it to heal me up, but having such a low health pool to begin with means if I leave my health pool low and wait for the Blood Fury to proc, it leaves me vulnerable to getting one hit if I mess up an overhead. I'm not sure what attempt it was, but the closest I got was right here. 34 minutes into a fight that normally lasts 10 minutes, in the final phase of the fight, nerves got the best of me. I got shaky with my clicks, I stayed on a corner too long and I died. This death honestly crushed me because later that day I had to pack up my computer and move all of my stuff into a new place. All the footage you've seen so far is 5 months old, and it was my last attempt before things got kind of chaotic in my life. I was really hoping it would have been the, you know, the last and clean kill and I could have wrapped up the second episode nice and easy. I was so fucking close and I just choked in the last few minutes of the fight. And with everything going on in my life, it's just kind of been sitting in the back of my mind, eating at me. And the renos in my place are all done now, so there's no more dust everywhere, I can put my computer back up. I also have a significantly better interconnect internet connection than the last time I attempted this fight. Last time I was staying with my parents for a few months, and they ran just like a basic internet plan, and it definitely affected my latency. With everything settled, I can finally start grinding RuneScape to attempt this boss again. And as much as I want to jump head first back into Fasani, I don't think I'm quite ready yet. After stepping away for a few months and coming back, I feel like I'm looking at the footage with less bias. My last attempt was my closest at around 34 minutes and I still had a whole phase to finish. Assuming a 40 minute fight with my current stats and Parasite RNG, it could take weeks to get a single KC. While it might be possible with tick eating or redemption flicking, it would still be a 40 minute fight. At the end of the day, the issue is my damage. I'd love to get a Fasani KC this episode, but it's already been a half year since my last episode, and I still have another month of grinding ahead of me before I can make consistent Fasani runs on this account. Long term, getting my attack and strength in the 90s will make significant difference in the DPS, lower the time of the fight, I think going for 75 magic for an imbued cape will also help, so that's on the to-do list. I just don't want to do one Fasani KC after two weeks and call it, I want to be able to grind this boss for money on this account, and I still have some work to do before we are there. So for me, it's time to do some grinding. I'm gonna need to park my ass in Nightmare Zone for a bit, get some combat gains, tele -alk some magic gains, maybe even uh, 75, 90, I don't know. It, w it wouldn't hurt to get higher. Either way, next episode, you can expect some clean Fasani runs. Uh, thanks for sticking it out, guys. Again, I'm sorry it took so long to get this episode out. I'm all settled into a new place now, and I'm working a new job with way more consistent hours, so hopefully I can start being more consistent with episodes. Fingers crossed. Uh, either way, thanks for watching. Peace.